Welcome to Club Doom, where here we have an unassuming picture of a cosplayer. She dressed like a superhero, staring seductively at the camera like, Yeah, babe, I bet you wish you was saved by me. Typical cosplayer stuff. Not really much else going on. Just some consenting adults having fun with a hobby. In the background, however, something cringe this way comes. If you look in the distance, maybe squint your eyes, cop yourself one of them weird spoons with the holes in them at the optometrist office. You might be able to make out what looked like a pixelated fedora and the scrub lord rockin' set fedora on the verge of making probably one of the worst decisions of his entire career this is tom preston aka andrew dobson the artist with an inflated ego Dobson here thought this lady was getting sexually harassed by the man taking the picture. And not only did he do nothing about it, but even funnier, he made his own Chris Chan-esque power fantasy comic, where his Reddit mod face-ass Care Bear OC violently accosts the photographer. Tell your girls to smile. Hey, quit it! Excuse me for a sec. Help! A blue bear in a fedora is attacking me with a baseball bat! Sir, this 911 line is for emergencies, not prank phone call. Thus saving the whammon from being objectified. Much like myself and some of y'all watching, if you heard of Andrew Dobson, chances are you was introduced to him through this exact comic, and the many memes and alternate endings associated with it. And it's a good start when looking into Dobson, cause off the rip you can tell exactly why people clown on him. The virtue signaling, the fedora, the little baby blue bear OC, the caricaturing of people he don't like. The Ken Penders head-ass amateur web cartoonist from the 90s-ass art style. All neatly packaged in one post for the entire internet to laugh at. But this was just another average day in the life of this... <clears throat> professional. Despite being discovered through his relatable So You're a Web Cartoonist series, Bull was anything but your average web cartoonist. Cause man, he had a mouth on him! It wasn't exactly rare to find Dobson popping off on randos in his DeviantArt or Twitter over just about anything. Fedora Man here was the king of having garbage takes, engaging in flame wars, and following it all up by strawmanning anyone who disagreed with him in his comics. Whether it was about art, his art in particular, politics, even something as trivial as video games. There's so many comics like this, bro. And if he was to point that out to him, you'd probably just be next. The Dobster had no chill. These hands were rated E for everyone. Even as far back as his days attending the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Or rather, prestigious art school, mind you. But Dobson here cannot take criticism. Not even when he paying you for it. So I'ma take you on a wild tour through the Dobson verse to show you just how this uppity, trifling ass goober effectively ruined what could have been a decent web art career for himself. Andrew. Dobson, like many Nintendults I've covered on my channel, seemed to be trapped in this hyper-specific idea of what video games supposed to be, as in video games peaked in the late 80s with Mario 3 and other platformers, and nothing else of significance since then. Half-Life might be one of the greatest experiences in interactive storytelling the FPS genre has ever produced. They casted Robert Guillaume as leader of the Resistance, for God's sake. It peak fiction, but no- that can't be nearly as fun as aimlessly flinging Wiimotes around, launching them jaws through the TV screen because you forgot to put the wrist strap on, but at this point I'm just nerding out. So let me show you Danny and Spot. Danny here be a modern gamer. Ew, who's into all the modern gaming yuckiness, like 1080p and processing power, nasty. But Spot, the cool cat here to show him, if it's not fun, or officially licensed by Nintendo, why bother? It's just fad. It'll never catch on. It's just a fad. It will never catch on. Eh, it's just a fad. It'll never catch on. Almost two decades later, I can name at least ten people off the top of my head who'll be letting the old Wiimotes rust away to a fine brown poisonous powder marinating in leaked battery acid in the basement. Somebody tag poorly aged things. Don't make me go woodman on your ass. Yo, pause. <laughs> the Wii has no good games. Ahem. I mean, no good games with online that work. Ahem. I mean, no new IPs or third-party support. I can do this all day. Okay, I get Mario Kart. Also, gotta love how he replaced Smash Bros. Brawl, a game with notoriously bad online, with this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shovelware looking ass Smash clone. I mean, it look I, but I don't know a single person who was playing this back in the day. Not even the biggest Wii fans. Listen, I ain't saying Nintendo don't deserve they flowers, but Dobson here made so many comics that just made no sense. But you know, modern gamer look dumb, he looks smart. So in his mind, he considered them John's a W, I guess. Whatever you tell yourself. However, even this bubble would 
pop when his favorite gaming company would drop Metroid Other M, one of the most controversial games in the Metroid lineup. Dobson really liked this game, even going as far as to say it better than Metroid Prime. And you know what? That's some mood. I can empathize. Twisted Metal 4, one of the funnest car combat games I've ever played, in my opinion, and y'all just mean. But I never played Metroid, so I don't know. I did some further digging into the game, and by further digging, I mean watching the zero punctuation review of Metroid Other M, just so I could see what about it Dobson liked so much. In the review, Yahtzee complains about how many times Samus's armor fall off. And considering this genre developed by Team Ninja, the same people behind Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think I may have stumbled upon the bigger picture as to why Dobson would stand for this game so much. I wonder if that's foreshadowing anything. Professional. Dobson leaned politically towards the left and was a self-proclaimed ally to the LGBTQ. He made it a huge part of his brand and things like Gamergate were a big talking point of his. He liked one of the five people on the planet who genuinely liked the direction Disney was taking IPs such as Star Wars and Marvel. You could say Dobson was a pioneer in being annoying on Twitter, deflecting every criticism his way as racist, phobic, or sexist. Oh, especially sexism. I love this one comic in particular where Cat Marvel just give her dissolving hand the look. And just like that, reassemble itself. Out of fear, Thanos be getting called misogynistic on Twitter. Oh no. And you know, he was heavy on criticizing the objectification of women in any industry, let alone media. Now with all that in mind, let me redirect y'all to the huge gallery of lesbian ogling fanfare. Alex the Pirate was a One Piece ripoff by Andrew Dobson, where the title character Alex finds any and every excuse to get naked or groped by her lesbian crewmate, Antia. And that's it. There's other characters and whatnot, but if we keep it at a buck, only one of them gets the shirt. Lesbian kick. What an iconic slogan. I can't wait for the next merch line with topping teeth. Like, what is this, bruh? This ain't representation. This ain't even fake representation in a desperate attempt to get a thumbs up from the HRC Foundation for immediately cutting them all out of the Chinese release. Bull here just trying to get a nut, and it's painfully obvious. You ain't slick, Preston. You far too easy to rile up on Twitter for that. Now, speaking of Twitter, Dobson's social media presence was, uh, pugnacious at best. However, I gotta point out, there ain't any rage videos of Dobson. That's typically what my audience looking for. As much as I would have loved to see a King Cobra JFS rant like Treasure Planet and anime are the reason I didn't get hired at Disney tubes. God damn it! That was never really Dobson's style. He was more of a blogger. However, we do got a couple animation videos if you want to get a sense of what Dobson sound like. Hey, Paisano! Oh my god. Mario, Luigi, Princess, Toad! Who did you expect, Pee Wee Herman? Hello, I'm Andrew Dobson and welcome to my Patreon. Over the past 10 years, I've worked on a lot of different projects, from my own independent works to collaborating with talented YouTube personalities. Unfortunately, I've gradually had to move away from making comics for myself, and that's where this Patreon and you come in. Howdy, I'm Flowey, Flowey the Flower. Hmm, you're new to the underground, aren't ya? Golly, you must be so confused. Someone ought to teach you how things work around here. Dear Lord, I forgot the Undertale Let's Play. You know what's going on here, don't you? <laughs> you just wanted to see me suffer. Die. <laughs> But nah, Preston was more of an old head, so things like Twitter or the journal section in DeviantArt were more of his speed. Now that don't mean he wasn't suffering from chronic Twitter fingers. When he wasn't wishing death upon the president at the time, he was telling Zelda Williams to calm thine tits. You know, on the one year anniversary of Robert Williams' death. Yeah, that's a very good taste. I, I can't imagine anyone getting pissed off at that. As a result of this recurring behavior, Dobson got that ass banned from a number of different social media sites. Bad news guys, my Twitter account is gone. Again. Honestly, not surprised. I genuinely didn't think it would last this long since it was technically ban evasion, but whatever. Guess I won't be posting on Twitter ever again. Still pretty shitty that it was my comment about how I wish Donald Trump would- 
on Alive is what ultimately got my account of 7 plus years banned. And the only reason it was reported in the first place is because I managed to get a harasser's Twitter account banned and they decided to take revenge by reporting everything I said, no matter how trivial. I wonder how trivial it was. Yo, unaliving would be a benefit to the human race. <laughs> Notice how he mentioned his quote-unquote harasser. Yep, Dobson was no stranger to trolling. Hell, even kids on Meverse was pulling ops on ya boy. Just blocked six people on Meverse for harassment, most of them 14 years old. Why would you announce this? Why would you tell people this? Why, as a grown-ass man, would you ever announce this to the whole world. <laughs> now, I could probably name a handful of different ops you probably already heard of via Magic Mush's video. The time someone sprayed him with water at a convention. The time 4chaners found his Minecraft server and did they 4chan thing. But my absolute favorite has got to be the Great Doodle War. Let me just read y'all the summary from Encyclopedia Dramatica, because I can't do this justice. November 2023, a lonely artistic soul on Encyclopedia Dramatica discovered a Java tool called Goggles, which allowed you to scribble on all non-SSL secured websites. The drawing and notes could only be seen when one activates the tool itself, so it was actually invisible to non-users. For the first few days, ED users doodled on Dobson's DeviantArt page, creating hate speech, cool drawings, commentaries, and one-sided lols. This all changed, though, when Lord Preston looked beyond his valley into the mighty EDF forums and saw those drawings in Tom Preston's thread. Immediately, he he grabbed himself a copy of the program and started belating everything systematically. Yes, he went through all his comics, all his comics and sub pages, and erased every single drawing. During this art lolocaust, <laughs> he killed a giraffe drawing that everyone on EDF cherished for some odd reason. This caused the beginning of one of the greatest storms Dobson had ever started. EDF reacted with an abrupt counter offensive and drew much more hateful stuff, calling Dobson a giraffe murderer and an art killer. It must be noted that every single drawing on his pages looked more inspiring than anything Dobson had ever ever photoshopped. This went on until Dobson actually went on the front page and wrote, leave me alone. He actually spent an entire night, deadass over 10 hours, erasing invisible drawings on his page. Soon his first white knights came in and started erasing mercilessly. It was at this point nobody could guess anymore if Dobson was actually partaking in this giraffe genocide. But that didn't matter later on. Why not? Because Dobson actually told his white knights on DA to destroy the drawings every week, completely contradicting his previous statements that he he does not care. The continued destruction of art made idiots rage. So hard, in fact, that they actually called in the Horde for reinforcements. What is this Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition that has bullshit? People on 4chan didn't seem to be interested at first, but as soon as increasingly more giraffes were killed, they started to grow a heart and actively <laughs> intervene. 4chan also seemed to have adopted the giraffe for a very short amount of time, but then soon forgot about it. From that point on, Dobson's DeviantArt page was a constant war zone before the program was made basically unusable thanks to the developers. The Braindead devs deactivated share drawing around 2014-2015 and locked features behind a paywall. Today, it basically impossible to use the tool. Mind you, all this was going on while Dobson had commissions months overdue. One of them likely being the Metroid Commission. Yeah, there was also a troll up where people from 4chan tried commissioning an art piece from Dobson, asking for revision after revision after revision. And you know how easy Dobson get frustrated. Bull was probably yanking what little hair follicles left on his head with tweezers out of frustration. During the four months this went on, Yes, it took four months to do this $45 project. Dead ass. And when he found out it was a troll, the fact these people went to so much trouble just to deceive me should be noted. Because throughout the entire exchange, there was no indication that what I was doing wasn't what they wanted. It was a trap. Plain and simple. And it rankled me. I didn't accept the commission after that for almost two years. And even what I do now, I still wonder in the back of my head if any of them are being sincere or if this is just another test designed to expose me. Expose him. Expose him. It's gaslighting and manipulative AF. Wow. 
talk about a drama queen. It ain't even like they were being nasty to him or anything. If you read the correspondence, it just, Hi Andy, I don't know if you have a specific revision policy or not, but if possible, could you maybe adjust the foreshortening on the arms a bit? The hand holding the gun in front looks too small, and the one moving backward looks too big. Also, I think the leg on the right side might look better if it were turned forward more instead of being in profile, but it's no big deal. Jesus, that was brutal. I don't think I could ever work under those conditions. This is the final picture, by the way. I've also heard the Ridley drawing in the background traced, which reminds me, one of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. Can you tell me which thing is not like the other? Before I finish this song, yeah, Dobson got into some deep sh over this blatant Big Ben tracing. Like, what's the big deal, guys? He only tried selling it at a convention while not giving any credit to the original photographer. Oops. People even made songs about it. And And Photoshop, I hope you die on your way to MCM. On your way to MCM. And in classic Dobson fashion, bro just could not take the L. A summary of the recent complaints. You somehow magically gained the ability to draw near photorealistic buildings overnight, and you choose to use this amazing newfound skill to draw buildings in the background. Curious that so many of the people crying copyright infringement over me using reference are the same people who take my comics and make parodies of them by cutting, rearranging, and re-uploading them without my permission. Sigh. Do as I say, not as I do, huh? Tracing attitude and topics aside, I think people's biggest issue with Dobson be his lack of work ethic. Preston never really grew as an illustrator or animator. You could probably take a handful of his works from different years, slap them Johns together in a big collage, say it all from the same year, and no one would be the wiser. He just did not care. He'd rather take to his blog, complain about never getting anywhere. Meanwhile, Andrew Chesworth, one of Dobson's peers back in college, would be working for, um, uh, I don't know. Disney! Where you wanted to be, Dobson! And you only have yourself to blame. At the end of the day, when you refuse to grow or improve or take anyone's advice, it's a guarantee that your art will be dull, that your art will stagnate, that your style will be recognizable. <laughs> <laughs> so with that in mind, wouldn't it just suck if people managed to stumble upon his weird porn alt? Meet Caddy N, aka Dobson's poorly veiled inflation alias. He tried so desperately to keep this on the down low, but with an encyclopedia dramatica page and an art style as recognizable as this, it was only a matter of time. He had a deviant art as well as a dedicated website. Yes, he paid for a domain just so he could partake in this freakery. Here you can inquire about commissions, read his blog, see a list of girls he won't inflate, play some flash games. Hold up. Play some flash games. Oh no 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 bro no popping action. Guide the poor inflated girl through a treacherous maze and avoid getting punctured. Don't pop me. Inflate the girl to the max before time run out. But don't inflate too much. Kaboom. Collect the nails the evil girl drops and protect your poor inflated friends. Oh no! Oh, in an inflation chat room. I don't even know how those conversations would even... Like, what? Ha what? I could only imagine what kind of freak bullshit was going on in there. There was a forum for all those inflation fans out here. Here's a nice little patch of heaven for you to enjoy. Your very own inflation-related forum. Only topics about inflation to be found here. Come in and feel loved by other people who enjoy your wacky fetish. Your weird objectification of women, which, yeah, I, I'm a whole dobster to task with that. This fool had the audacity 
to make a huge stink on Twitter about sexy girls in media. Meanwhile, drawing porn where women get unnaturally inflated, filled with air type beat into literal sex objects. Miss me with that. And while the discovery of this page wasn't necessarily the final nail in the... Yeah, our story would come to a close in 2020. Rumor has it, Preston's volatile internet presence would end up costing his brother an important government job. As a result, his family demanded he get his ass off the internet, which he did. He deleted his Tumblr, deleted his blogs, deleted most of his websites, still paying for the domain though, and just dipped. Though not as drastic as the game dude, he ain't been seen since. One of the few rare occasions where a lol cow was told, ayo, hey, maybe at best you get off the internet, and they took said advice. Hard to believe it was Dobson of all people. I'd like to thank y'all for stopping by and listening to my dumbass rant about stupid internet stuff. If you enjoy this type of content, please like, comment, subscribe, check out some of the other people I collab with. We got a fun little community going on here, and as long as you ain't a dick, you should have a good time. With all that said, this Club Doom signing out, and I will catch y'all the next time. Sweet Nectar.